Welcome back to the Introduction to Materials. In this video, we are going to improve even further upon our material by adding in some animated elements. Now, our actual objective is to take these uh, glowing lava crevices that are in between our rocks and start to sort of bring them to life by adding some sort of kind of subtle motion taking place under the surface, almost like uh, roiling flames, okay. if you will. So let's uh, go ahead and get started. I'm going to open up the generic browser. We'll double-click our material. Notice I didn't say its name. And what we're going to do is create a new network whose sole job is just to uh, create kind of an undertone to this glow. Now, you'll notice that I have switched over from a sphere over to a box. There's no real reason, but the big flat surfaces will make what we're doing a little more apparent. Okay. Now, the first thing I need is some sort of a texture. So what I'm going to do is kind of step over here out of the way. I'm going to hold down the T key and left click, and that's going to create a texture sample. And I need to go get the texture that we're going to use. So let's open up the generic browser over in the properties of our texture sample. And I'm going to open up the NV effects package. Actually, not, not that one in particular. Under the effects folder, we're going to grab FX explosion textures, excuse me, because we want something that looks kind of fiery. And I just happen to know from digging around that there is an FX roiling flames modulate texture in here, which is perfect for what we want to do. So we'll select this. Let's close our generic browser, and we'll apply. And we see that appear. Now, before we really start creating our network... You know, it looks a little funny. We don't really know where this is going to go. Things are starting to look a little bit visually disorganized inside of our network. And just me, personally, that drives me nuts. I would like everything to be very well organized so that I can come in here and immediately know what each section of my material network is doing. So before I really start doing anything with this texture, let's take a moment and do some organizational cleanup, if you will. What I'm going to do is bring in a new kind of comment. You've already seen how we can take this uh, description property and add it to any one of our, uh, our material expressions and give them a name right here inside of the view. But what we can also do is surround these with a comment box, which is very handy. What I'm going to do is hold down Control and Alt and drag out a marquee selection box around all of the nodes that have to do with our normal map. I'm going to move them kind of out of the way, get them off kind of by themselves, and I'm going to hit the C key. Now, this gives us a new comment dialog window, and we enter in a name. Let's call this uh, Base and Detail Normals. There you go. Now, notice how they all pop up in this box. Now, if we select this box, uh, there's some cool things we can do with it. If we try to move the box, all of the nodes within it will come along for the ride, which is really handy for reorganizing our network and keeping things nice and neat. Now, uh, moving up from here... We have our uh, diffuse channel, which is just this one texture here, and then he's also powering our specular. I don't really see any reason to have him in his own little uh, comment box. So what we'll do is we'll select him and the entire specular network. We'll pull these out of the way, and we'll hit C, and let's call this diffuse and specular. So that's nice and neat, and we can you know start to organize that as well. Now, up here, I would like to grab all of these nodes that have to do with our glow system. We'll hit C again, and we'll call this the base glow system. Exactly that, but there's a bit of a problem. I don't like how this texture is tying in here. I, I think it starts to make things look a little bit uh, disorganized. So what we're going to do is grab this texture sample. We're going to Control-C, Control-V it to make a duplicate of it, and you can do this without any excess overhead. If, even if it's uh, referring to the same texture that you've already called to, it's not a problem. And then we will attach this right into where this uh, original one was attached, and now, as you can see, we can separate these guys and keep things nice and neat all throughout our network, and I really like that. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's move things out a little bit, and now we have this nice big open area to work. Okay, so we have a flame texture. What do we want to do with this flame texture? Well, let's start simple. I'm going to work in each aspect of the overall effect one piece at a time so you can see everything as we do it. We'll start off by multiplying this by our overall glow. So now that I have created this organization, you'll notice we kind of have to zoom out because everything is really well spaced out, but that's okay. No worries there. Let's just take our little texture that we've created, hold down the M key, and we'll left-click and create a multiply node. And we'll use the result of our glow network as input A. 
and we'll just plug this texture into input B. And let's just see what happens if we just plug this into emissive. Okay, uh, it, it's cool for starters. I mean, we have now darker areas of glow and lighter areas of glow, but the problem here is it's almost like you'd want to start cranking up your glow intensity, maybe uh, up to 10, to really start getting some more glow back in there, because everything kind of darkened up on us. Also, it would be nice if this whole thing moved a little bit. So let's go ahead and uh, tackle that next. I've increased my glow a bit. I might increase it more, but let's see it all in motion. Now, to move something, you need a special material expression node called a panner, which you'll see here. You can drag it out into the workspace or just hold down the P key and left click, and that'll create one for you. And what a panner does, if you take a look at its properties, it has a speed X and a speed Y, and you're going to plug this into the UVs of any given texture sample. So let's go ahead and start off by setting our speed. Uh, we're going to set uh, 0 0.05 for X and 0 0.03 for Y. Now before I go any further, let's take a look at some of our settings over up here inside of our uh, uh, for our workspace. And I wanted to say for our viewport, but it's actually for both of our viewports. We have the ability to toggle real-time material viewport and real-time expression viewport. I'm going to activate both of these. And you'll see why here in just a second. As soon as I connect this panner up to our UV coordinate, we start to get motion. So there you go. I mean, that's, that's a start. Now, it's slow motion, but my problem with it is if you stare at it for just a second, you start to get a real feel for its direction. It really looks like everything is shifting, uh, in this case, toward the upper left corner of the material. And I don't really want that. What I want is something that looks a little bit chaotic. Not necessarily like something is panning along, but like parts are getting darker and lighter, almost in a uh, kind of like a Gaussian noise sort of way. Now, we don't really have a way to do that, but we can fake it by creating a second texture sample along with a, a second panner. So let's go ahead and just duplicate these two, and I'll just stack them one right over the other. I'm going to take this second panner, and I'm going to invert its values. So these two panners will actually be working exactly against each other, and they don't necessarily have to. It's just the way I'm choosing to do this. So one's moving one way. One is moving the exact opposite way. Now, how do we bring these two together? What I'm going to do is I'm going to add them. So uh, let's get this multiply and kind of scoot it out of the way. We'll maybe get these nodes and slide them back to give us a little more room. I'm going to hold down the A key and left click so that we're adding things together. It'll bring in an add node. Let's just connect this to input A and the lower one to input B. And there you go. And you can see the two kind of working against one another. Now, if, uh, if you wanted to, this could work. We could just take this and plug it right into input B. Let's just see what it looks like. And it takes a second for you to kind of catch up with what's going on, but you can see that we have pockets of bright, intense yellow that are kind of moving around and starting to pool. Now, just because I want to show you some different things and really, you know, kind of drive certain points home, you can take one of these textures, or either one, and change the amount of tiling they have if you need some more variation. So what I'm going to do is grab a texture coordinate, and we'll just drag this in. And it doesn't really matter which one you apply it to. I'll just apply it to the top one. Let's plug this into the coordinate input. And we'll just tile this by two. So the top one is twice as large as the bottom one. So we have different levels kind of working against one another uh, back and forth. Now, my problem with adding these two together is that everything got a lot more intense. You'll notice we've lost a little bit of our contrast here. We have bright and we have just slightly less bright, so the motion becomes a little bit harder to see. What I want to do is bring some contrast back in, and as we've already established, if you need more contrast, bring in a power node. So let's go ahead and grab a power from our list, and I'll just drag that in like so, and I'll put it right after the add node, and we'll connect it into the base. Now let's move our network up a bit, and I'm going to condense everything down, so bear with me just a second. I'm going to move everything really close so that we're not using a whole lot of space if we don't have to. And then down underneath our add, let me bring in a constant. And again, that was holding down the one key and left clicking if you've uh, forgotten that hotkey combination. Let's connect this to our exponent value. And I'll select that constant and set its exponent over to 2. 
And that gives us the same thing we have over in Add, but a lot more contrastier. So we have some darker areas of dark and some brighter areas of light. Let's plug that over into our input B. And there you go. So now those uh, glowing areas are a lot more obvious. Yeah, very nice. So that takes care of the uh, perturbation, uh, perturbing our glow. Let's go ahead and make this a new section of our network. I'm going to hold down Control and Alt and marquee select all of these nodes. Notice I'm not worried about the multiply. I don't necessarily think he needs to be in this comment box, but let's hit C, and we'll call this glow perturbation. It's a big word. It makes us sound important. Glow, flames, or you can call it whatever you want. But there we go. So now we can see that we have these two larger networks. These networks are labeled, but we can also see that they're being multiplied together in some fashion just by taking a look. Even if we don't know what this node does, we can tell, we can infer that these uh, two networks are being combined and plugged into something. So as soon as we zoom in, oh, they're being multiplied. Oh, this is feeding into emissive. So it all starts to make sense. The only other thing I might do, and this is personal preference, you wouldn't have to do this if you didn't want to, is uh, I would take my glow system and glow uh, perturbation, and I would move these down. I would take diffuse and specular and move them up. And notice we've got some guys who are kind of hanging on here that you know, kind of got a little bit tied out. Now, the only reason I'm doing this is just so that not as many wires are crossing, and I just caused another one to cross. So <laughs> It just happens so, when you've got so many nodes in there. Yeah, sometimes you can't get away from it, but I do like whenever possible to untangle my wires as much as I can. So I couldn't do it in this case, but just food for thought. You can use this to really quickly and easily rearrange large sections of your network, as you just saw. So that is all I really wanted to demonstrate in this example. In the next video, we're going to take a look at animating our uh, material even further, by causing a pulsation in the lava glow over time. So that's going to wrap up for this lesson. Thank you very much.